as a little introduction how easy and fast it is to create all the different types of level elements within the CryEngine 2 editor. We have here in our environment system now a quite longer view distance. It's not just like maybe in other engines 1000 kilometers with a big fog effect like this that you can see up here one kilometer but we have up to 8, 16 kilometers view distance without slowdown because we've got a integrated LOD system so the terrain is optimized and the, the trees are optimized so even though we have two million, two million polygons on screen its frame rate is pretty good so um, together with this um, long view distance we thought about integrating a really uh, is really cloud system so you can actually move inside the clouds or they travel around so they are not statically baked into the skybox anymore let's move down a bit maybe here to the city let me show you the uh, how we light the level the uh, lighting is done with our time of day lighting system so you can say uh, where the sun should rise and uh, you can say how, how bright it is and what type of fog settings you can have 0.5 maybe as you move to the night you get a star map that's not a texture of, of the stars so really uh, it's a generated texture based on the position where you are on the earth um, so the sky map automatically updates them also you might you might notice uh, the shadows are updating in real time they are really yeah smooth soft shadows so even though they are real time there's not a disadvantage using them it's a huge benefit uh, it allows us to have fully destructible environments as the shop uh, as the shadows will update in real time and there's no I ah, missed it. Okay, I right, got it. So, but you can see how nicely the shadows are updating, and there's no, no, yeah, baking into this. Let's talk a little bit more about destructible environments. Um, for example, for buildings, we uh, defined certain breakpoints. For example, here at this point, the building can break. So this is all set up by artists. They tell you where it should break, let's throw some hand grenades and bada boom it breaks and you see basically the all the shadows here getting updated, there's no and they are resting so there's no intersection happening anymore. About the creation tools, we get the integrated uh, vegetation system, and the vegetation system uh, allows the designer to literally, uh, yeah, paint uh, forests and other type of natural uh, environments um, based on certain functions, for example, density or the elevation. So obviously, underwater there should not be trees growing. So with all this setup and almost just one mouse click. You, you build your little forest. It is not so fast. You build your little forest, and you can you can move around certain elements, rotate them, and make basically the forest as as dense as you want to have. Then on the ground, there's obviously right now there's grass. Let's turn on the procedural vegetation. So these is uh, these are this distributed uh, objects based on the um, ground coverage for example for example if I paint the forest texture I defined within the vegetation system there should be little plants growing, growing on them and I can also define how dense this should be for example let's let's change the density to a bit more and there will be more plants growing here or put it back and make make the size very very different, general size different, and they automatically automatically update in real time. 
it's a huge benefit when creating levels to have all these controls so you can tweak them and uh, define them depending on how dense you want to have the combat here in the section. About the terrain modification, we get uh, different tools. It's for example, uh, the normal terrain sculpting tool. It's like here, you, you modify the height map. And you can say, oh, I want to have it this high. Oh, I, I want to cut in here some mountain. And it, uh, the shading obviously get also updated in real time. You, you build a flat section and you paint on this section, for example, grass. And what you can do is you can say uh, where the texture should be uh, painted on. For example, this one I allow, I allow only to paint on a slope up to 45 degrees. So I paint here, and even though my cursor is over the uh, steep section, it doesn't get painted there. Whereas on the other side, if I paint the cliff, the cliff is just from 45 to 90 degree angle. So even if I paint on the grass, it's not painted on, so you, add it, you can pretty quickly texture a level with these functions. As you might know, the height map is just a 2D thing that is um, extended up, and we can create um, mountains that are up to 10, 10 kilometers high. Uh, we also have a voxel tool, and the voxel tool allows us to yeah, build um, 3D terrain, really 3D terrain where stuff goes out of the height map, like for example here, or inside the height map, like we use for caves or other kind of cool phenomena. Inside here you can obviously also texture this or, or smooth it out, then you walk inside and the geometry automatically got updated. So there's no, no slowdown, no re-exporting. All this is pretty easy to sculpt out.